had a restraining order in Dennis one time that he couldn't come by the house at all. And uh, ever so often I'd be getting ready to go to work and I'd be taking a shower and I'd hear the doorbell. And, uh, and Dennis would, I hear you all, Dennis say, it's just me, Mom, I just happened, I wanted to come by real fast, I know I can't be here. I'd open the door and there's a Coke bottle with a flower in it. Or, yeah, or I'd get a knock on the, on the window and the, you know, where I'm take a shower and there he is, had to see you, Mom, and take off, you know, just that fast. And, uh, but uh, God answered my prayers and we're all okay now. I think it was closer to around the World Championship in 77 when I, I was starting to slide a little bit. Choosing the drug over the love of the sport, my whole career was taken from me. Nothing stopped me, eight to 10 hours. I wanted to become the best. I was focused, I was driven. And, I, and so I ate flat cramped as a kid skateboarding. But then once the success, once that drug took over my life, this became my life. I had to rob to get the money, to get the dope, to get the needle, to get the hotel room, to get the girl. Can you imagine that was my mission statement for so long? From having everything in life, making $40,000 a month in high school, to coming down and being stripped of that, living underneath the bridge? I had to go back and just rethink, um, what does it mean to really make it in life? And then my focus has been ever since, is not a trophy, but a, a person, a human being. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, an average guy that gets out of prison within a year, 85% will go back to prison. If you don't give them those tools, then they're going to revert back to what they know. Oh, I never had a chance to live a healthy life, you know. I started off as a heroin addict. You know, when I was born, my parents were users. I, I learned street knowledge, and uh, I ended up getting shot at, shooting at people, uh, into drugs, dealing, selling, using. I realized my life was one successful failure. You know what I mean? I succeeded at failing. And I wanted more for my son than when I lived. I dedicated my life to the streets. Not all the people that are locked up or did something bad are bad people. They made a mistake. Some costly more than others, but it doesn't mean that person is bad. Most of these guys have a drug and alcohol problem. These guys here, I look at them, there's a story about the diamond in the rough, in, the, in, in Africa they got these diamond mines. They send in the, the, the extractors and they go in and they, when they walk in they say they see these little sparkles and they know that's a diamond. So they'll go and extract those diamonds but when you look at them they're, they're kind of foggy, they're undeveloped and, and that's the way the, the, the extractors look at them. But when they bring it to the master jeweler and the master jeweler gets a hold of that diamond and by the time that jeweler's done, you know, the ladies look forward to getting something like that on their finger. And this is what I see in those guys. They can't see it, not yet. But that's why you gotta keep working, keep chiseling, keep driving, keep encouraging, keep building, keep correcting, keep going at them, not giving up. So this is that program that we've done and 47% uh, crime rate, and there hasn't been one death in 17 and under for two years, and that's a record since the 1960s. How many of you this morning when you woke up, you went over and you hugged your kids and you told them that you loved them. Raise your hand. So the program is effective and it's working. And what it's doing, it's giving a purpose for these guys, a second chance to be somebody, to start working in the community and working next side by side with San Diego Police Department. Tonight you'll see San Diego PD and some of these guys who feared the police and probably still do to an extent, working side by side, caring about these kids and their parents to see their lives change. You guys ever think you'd be here in this position like this? Like, never. <laughs> nah. <laughs> never. Nah. No. There is a possibility that we can make negatives and make a strong positive. So, uh, I'm glad we're a part of that. You know, I'm doing things that I never thought I'd be doing. You know, and it strains me. I was there. I gave up. I committed suicide. I tried to take my life. And I see myself in these guys. I'm never, be, I'm never gonna be changed, but every day I'm changing. Every day I'm getting better. But I won't never be well. Don't get it wrong, I'm 37 years old. My thinking, to this day, is foul. You guys got something good going for you, you know? I would really love to change places with any of you right now, to do it all over again. And now, I got another chance, and 
I'm trying to change my life. And I met a lot of people that really care about me. I realized that I don't want to do these things no more. This is a World Championship Cup, 35 years old, 1977. The very thing that I ain't slapped dreamt was taken from me. And I allowed it. People gave to me to give me that second chance. And now it's my turn to pay it forward to someone else and give them that same chance that was given to me. Everybody deserves that second chance in life.